Welcome to the Rocking Your Roll show with me, Jenny Garrett, executive coach and author. Now, you know my show's all about women in business, and today I have a delight for you. We have Shireen Richter all the way from South Africa. She is an amazing international laughter coach. She may have us laughing, but I'm sure she'll also give us lots of insights into the world of business and her success. So welcome, Shireen. How are you? Hi, Jenny. Thank you. And thank you so much for having me today. I'm just great. Thank you. Oh, good. You look look amazing. You look very relaxed and uh, very elegant. So it's really good to see you. I am feeling relaxed because I've been fortunate enough to have four days of vacation time. So this is really the busiest time of year for so many people. And um, having a couple of days to unwind always helps. Yes, absolutely. So a lot of people won't know what laughter coaching is and won't know uh, about you and your business. So please tell us a bit about you. Okay, so my name is, as you said, Shireen Richter, and I'm a laughter and happiness professor. What I do is help companies and individuals to de-stress, to release the way they're feeling without having to go into too much cognitive thought processing. Um, I think so many people today are just not coping with life. We have so many pressures, so many responsibilities, and really just, especially as women, so much on our plates that we have to deal with. And what I find and what I'm seeing is that people are just not coping. So what laughter coaching is, is a gift given to every single human being because of course we can all laugh we all know how to laugh we've all been given this amazing gift and i teach how to access that gift in order to create biological and physiological shifts in the body so that we are able to release our stress and feel better because when we feel better we're more able to cope with all the responsibilities and pressures and we are better we're we're better mothers better daughters better sisters better at work um just better human beings when we're when we feel great that's fantastic i'm just thinking about organizations and wondering they how do they get attuned and really understand what you do because i can imagine that's a difficult one to sign off sometimes to say i'm paying for for my staff to laugh you know (laughs) How do you, how do they, how do they get it, I wonder? So I I guess the the challenge is always getting people to understand that what I do is not something to be taken lightly because I think after is a serious business. Yeah. I try and market it as part of training and stress management. And what I really say to organizations is that traditional stress management is failing us because if it was working, we would have very productive, proactive, motivated people. And if you look around the world, that's really not what we're seeing anymore. We're seeing stressed, fearful, uh, anxious, uh, tired people for most of the part. And so it's it's kind of a, a training, yes. and yeah. I, and and what I, I really try and and tell to corporates and in South Africa, most of my clients are the top one hundred companies within South Africa. I have trained in excess of thirty thousand people to date. Wow. wow! And and really, what I try and say to people is your traditional HR, your traditional stress management training, accesses certain parts, but. A lot of it has to be done regularly, the same as anything, and a lot of it takes a huge amount of commitment and work. And people just don't have the time, effort, or energy to do that. And so they love the idea of stress management techniques in concept, and they'll attend training and come back with two big files of information and days and days of learning. And not to say that what they've learned isn't good. It is good. In most cases, again, when you're tired, you know you need to exercise in order to feel good. And when you're tired, the last thing you do is get up early to go and do some exercise. (laughs) When you are feeling tired, what happens is, and you're feeling stressed, you know you should eat healthily, but especially when winter comes and your sugar levels are low, the first thing you want to do is eat comfort food. Now, you've got all the books next to our bed. We've got all the, the information in our head, but actually doing it is really difficult. And yes. for the most part, we don't do it. Yes. The magic in what I teach and the magic in laughter is that it's not hard. It's easy. And the human default is to be happy. We want to be happy. We want to feel joyful. We want to feel good. 
And this is something you don't have to pay for. You don't have to own membership to attend. You don't have to shower afterwards. You don't have to belong to a club. You can do it on your own. You can do it at home. You can do it in the car, on the train, at work. And literally by doing it, after two minutes, well, you will feel a shift. So it's not try this for a month and see how you feel in a month. Try and implement these ideas and see what happens. When, when companies do this and they do it with teams, instantly the shift is instant the teams connect the barriers are broken down and no matter what is going on within that organization people feel shifted so i've been called in a lot of the time especially coming up now towards the end of the year unfortunately to help companies deal with retrenchments and um with layoffs with reduction in staff um, deep no bonuses and companies are worried because their people are in panic mode and their people are going is their job security what's going to happen and when you have people in that space that don't perform effectively yes. Yes. so when i come in it's almost like and you say how do people take to it it's almost like what are we going to do this is last resort okay we better just try this yes. Yes. the result and the impact is so huge and so instantaneous because the minute you do it you feel good you yes. cannot laugh yes. and not feel good immediately afterwards yes. and you know how to do it so all i'm really doing is not even teaching you stuff you don't already know. I'm just helping you to access the magic that was inside of you all along. Oh, it sounds brilliant. It does sound amazing. It really, really, really brilliant. And uh, I love the way you said how the the instant effect, because yes, we, we are an impatient society. We do want things now. And something that can really work in, in a short space of time is really, really wonderful. I want to know, how did you get here? How did you become this prof- laughter professor? How did it happen? It's a very interesting story, actually. I My background is in HR and I have an honours degree in industrial psychology. Mm-hmm. And I've been in business for over 20 years, managing my own staff of over 35 people and also helping to run and manage a call centre with over 1,000 people taking close to a million calls a month. Wow. So wow. anyone in the call centre business will know that there's high staff turnover, high levels of stress. We were dealing with emergency assistance services and so I was always looking and have always been interested in de- different methodologies to help my own staff and to help myself of yes. course because yeah. you know shift changes shift starts with you yes and uh, interestingly enough I was watching Oprah I absolutely adore Oprah and think she has taught so many people so many powerful things and her makeup artist who suffers from depression had just lost a close friend of hers and he had attended a laughter session and Oprah interviewed him and she said to him how did you feel after you did it and he looked at her and he said i felt the stress lift off my body lifted off my soul Mm. and i thought oh my goodness i need some of that yes and uh, unfortunately, at the time, it was in over 65 countries around the world. But at the time, there wasn't anything available in South Africa. Okay. So I kind of just filed it in the back of my mind. And about a year later, as fate would have it, I happened to be reading an article in a magazine. I had a family member who was very ill in hospital, and my family was in a really bad state. And I saw that there was somebody here from overseas who was running a session. Uh and dragged my whole family off to the course. <laughs> the data didn't arrive, unfortunately. Oh, but oh. somebody who had done a session happened to be there, and they said they would facilitate. Right. right. So they facilitated. The facilitation was terrible. <laughs> uh, my children, who were teenagers, thought I was absolutely crazy mm. for bringing them to such a mad thing. But I felt like I was on drugs afterwards. Mm. So for three days afterwards, I walked around going, oh, hi. I couldn't know what was going on. And for me, what was so powerful was the facilitation wasn't good. Nothing had changed in my life. But what had changed so profoundly was how I felt inside. Yes. And um, I did manage to get hold of the, the gentleman who was here from overseas got him to train me and started to pay it forward at home. So people to come and they had to give some form of charity, it didn't matter what, and I would do laughter with them. And some of my friends and people who would come were MDs of very big companies. Mm. A friend of mine was a sub-Saharan African manager for HP Compaq at the time. 
And she said, come and do this for my team. Come, yes. you've got to come. have this in my company. And being the, the type of individual I am, I have to do things properly. So what I did do is took myself to the doctor who developed the program in India and went to study with him. Mm-hmm. His name is Dr. Kataria. And, and it is now in over 75 countries around the world. Gosh. And since then, it's been a process of using laughter and adding positive psychology, work from Harvard University, work from Stanford University, from Dr. Martin Seligman, and putting together programs that are powerful and really provide instant shifts in people. Mm -hmm. And that I think is what the world needs. That's what we all need is something to change us now. Something that doesn't require a lot of work, something to pull people together and connect people. You know, just looking at kids and, and I'm here on a beach holiday at the moment, and you walk along the beachfront and all you do is see people yes, texting on absolutely. You look at restaurants and people are sitting texting. And this is about reconnecting with our souls. It's mm. about looking into somebody's eyes and seeing inside of them and laughing with them instead of, you know, sending a message on a text or, or connecting via email. It's really connecting and going back to basics again. Yes. You know, what I really like about your story is the fact that it was, you know, you watched Oprah, you heard about someone, you filed it, and then you ended up, it ended up happening in South Africa, and then you carried on your journey. And I think sometimes people are looking for their thing. They're looking for that thing that is their purpose, their passion. And sometimes we have found it, but we haven't quite actually nurtured it and developed it yet and I, you know some of our the viewers and listeners however they engage with this might want to just go back into their filing cabinet in their mind or or their notebook where they wrote that one thing that was of interest to them and just think how could I rekindle that how could I really work on that you know maybe I gave up on that a bit too easily um, because look what it's done for you you know you followed it and it's it turned into something huge and um, you know like, we can obviously see how passionate you are about it. I think you're so right, Jenny, and in fact, uh, I'm busy finishing off a course by a Harvard professor called Tal Ben Shahar. Mm, He's mm. now an international speaker, and he wrote a book on happiness, he wrote a book on choices, and the course that I've just finished, he speaks a lot about luck, Mm. and he speaks exactly as you're saying about finding your passion, but what he also does he speaks about gratitude. Right. And gratitude is a huge thing. And he says, luck, there's no such thing as luck. Yes. He said, but when you are present and you are grateful and you are aware of noticing what's going on around you, there's no such thing as luck because when something happens, you're aware of it. Yes. You're grateful for it being brought into your space and you do something about it. Mm. So people who are lucky are people who would meet someone and go, oh my goodness. I'm grateful that person's been brought into my space. I'm aware of their value. What can I do with them? Yes. What, how can I collaborate with them? And what can come out of that? And to others on the outside, it would seem, my goodness, it's so lucky. Look how they met that person. Yes, yes. That, what happened. But it's really about being present, noticing it, and then acting on it. And taking action is, again, you know, especially in, in being successful in anything you do. We can dream, we can pray, we can ask for synchronicity, but action, as Nelson Mandela said, mm. action is the gap between your dreams and what reality actually is. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think often women are waiting to be confident or waiting for something to happen before they act. And I'd encourage, just as you've said, people to act. And that leads to confidence. That leads to more good things happening. Um, And I think, as you say, we we always feel, and and I think as women, mm. for me certainly, I kind of thought, well, I'm a laughed and happiness professor. It's a bit crazy what I do. It's a bit out there. Am I really as good as all these other people that I see? Am I as good as these other speakers? Other people look at me and go, oh, my gosh, that's so amazing what you do. Yes. And inside, and I think so many of us do this, I go, I'm just a little old me. I'm just yes. showing up. Um, you know, I kind of learned how to laugh, and this is what I do. But I think that the more you act, the more you do it, the more you shine your, your beauty and your power to the world the more the world takes that and, and it's not even about um, you even knowing it, it's just about doing. No, yes. Eventually when you do, it, it comes back. So there have been many times where I've thought, oh, who am I, you know? Yes. But yes, I, I've trained over 30,000 people and made them happy. So it is powerful, you know? Yeah. 
completely. And, and all of us in our own way have that power, hmm. whether it's just being a mom, whether it's going to work, whether it's being a bus driver. As long as you do it with passion and you do it well, we are all contributing, and that, I guess, is key. Yeah. So um, I, I'd love to know a bit more about um, the challenges you may have faced on your journey. You know, you said 20, 20 years of working and, and running, your, you're running your own business. What sort of challenges have you faced and maybe what, what has been helpful to overcome them? I think going back to exactly what we were chatting about mm. now, the biggest challenge for me is in the last two years I've really on a personal level gone through probably two of the most difficult years of my life mm. um, from my mom who was diagnosed with stage four cancer to my son who was epileptic and his epilepsy went out of control to just so many family issues financial issues with my husband and him changing businesses things that so many people are experiencing today and for me my biggest challenge in being successful or doing what I'm doing is how do I wake up in the morning feeling like I just don't want to get out of bed, mm. set my eyes out, and being the laughter professor. Yes. How do you tie the two up? Because I'm the person who makes other people happy. Yeah. And yeah. for me, a huge part of that was feeling inauthentic. Mm. You know, surely the laughter professor should be the happiest person on the planet. Yes. Until something very profound happened in my life, and my mom had to have surgery. She had to have a biopsy and she had to have surgery. Right. And at that time that she was scheduled to have it, I was scheduled to do an hour's corporate laughter session with hundreds of people. Mm. And I sat at the dinner table and I said to my family, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Yes. I think God's playing a sick joke on me, mm. actually. How am I supposed to go and laugh? And my mom's having an off. It's not just going to work, sending an email. I feel completely inauthentic. I feel like I just want to cry. How am I going to do this? And my 17-year-old son, you know, our kids are our biggest mirrors. Yeah. And my 17-year-old son said to me, you know what, mom? You have to live what you teach. Yes. And you have to tell people that they can use this no matter what they're going through in life, mm. no matter how hard their challenge is, then you have to do it yourself. Yes. And so for me, really bridging that gap of being authentic and 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 laughing um, was my biggest challenge. And what I realized is that this is the gift. The gift yeah. is the cue. Yeah. It's not about laughing all day. It's not about walking around laughing. It's about using the tools that we were given. And I guess any situation that happens, you know, if you're in business, you're the CEO, you're a, 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 and, and you're having a bad day, how do you act powerfully and go and lead a team or whatever it is that you might be doing when you're not feeling it inside? Yes. And the, the motto with the laughter coaching is fake it till you make it. And what I say, fake it till you become it. Yes, yeah. When you're at it enough, it becomes mm, yeah, yeah. So when you act that happy, joyful, coping together person, even when you're feeling sad and sad, you're still able to keep it together. Yeah, I love that, and I also love that you said "fake it to be you become it" because um, I yeah, the the other saying "fake it to make it" means that. You, you know it feels a little bit less authentic because it feels like when you make it you'll drop it and what you're saying yeah. is no you'll live it and I yeah I think that's so important and um and thank you so much for sharing that because obviously it has been a really tough time and yeah you've had to be extremely resilient uh within that period and still be growing your business still be looking after your family um and and these are challenges that women entrepreneurs face every day you know typically women still have um, you know the a bigger share of the caring responsibility and you know and we want it most of the time as well we want to be there for our families and our children so it's not something that we resent but it's it's tough isn't it it's very hard yes. because it's hard to be everything for everyone yes. you know yeah um, and and but the different roles I think and, and I know that this is where you're the expert mm. but blocking your different roles mm. fills the parts of your soul so when you're the mom and you've got that beautiful child who needs you and cares for you you feel fulfilled in one aspect and then when I know when I'm out there and I'm training people and I leave and there's a room of hundreds of people that are feeling happy and shifted and brighter and lifted that fills another part of my soul and I feel like I'm fulfilling my soul's purpose so it's it's really about being able to balance that and act it and Essentially, I think, and, and what I teach people is 
giving them the ability to cope, giving them mechanisms, tools, because we don't have the tools. No. But yet laughter, if you think about it, is as essential to the human being as breathing. Yes, yeah. I mean, every person has it, and for as long as you have breath, you have laughter. Absolutely. And it's not discriminatory, so it doesn't matter where you live, what your color is, what your religion is. It doesn't, we all have that ability. So we have to also think why. Mm. Ah, we breathe, yes, we do. Our heart beats, yes. We have laughter, we blink. They're all essential things to the functioning of the human being, but we've conditioned ourselves that it's something that we really don't need. And I think we're always looking outside of ourselves for the answer to all the big questions in life. How do we cope? How do we manage our lives? How do we become more effective, more powerful, better at what we do? But truthfully, the answers are already given. As you said earlier, it's within us. Yes, yeah. But back to that, and I think when people start going back to that, that's when we'll become access that power again. So I'm listening to you and I'm hearing uh, some of your language and your feeling, you know, around um, talking about soul and and really feeling quite a spiritual sense from you, actually, in the way you talk about your business and, and engage in it. And some people I know um, will probably will think that actually to be a business person, you can't be like that. To be a business person, you need to be tough. You need to be masculine. You need to be, you know, macho. And I wonder if... if well, I'd love to know your tips for women in business, but also what you think about that. I think that it's a combination of both. Mm. I think you do have to be powerful, and I think the gift that so many women have is that you can be powerful and be empathetic. Yes. You can be powerful and be caring. Mm. You can be powerful and see the other person's point of view. Mm. And there's a difference between being a doormat yes. yeah. and... Being, being that empathetic, genuine leader. Mm. And I think for me, really, uh, what, what's really helped me is com- a combination of the two. Mm. You know, I think if you're just going to be that powerhouse that's just going to tread on everybody's toes and march across everything to get where you're going to get and you don't fill your soul, firstly, you're going to have that big empty gap, but secondly, um, Allowing your 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 inner you to to also be nourished brings with a lot of support and a lot of people. Mm. And and I think as women really and and in 2013 going into 2014, collaboration with power is yes. key because you know you can still be a firm leader and be a caring boss and be empathetic, but still have your boundaries and still go. This is where this is where I draw the line. I have an amazing, amazing helper, and we've become very, very good friends. Her name, her, her title is Happiness Helper and Creative Cookie. <laughs> we have become such close friends, and I guess it's the same being a woman in a marriage or having children. It's having your boundaries, and yes. I think if you're just clear on those boundaries and you respect your boundaries for yourself, and they're reasonable and fair, you don't need to be that person who stands on everybody else. That's mm. That, you know, to be powerful, your children know if they do something, it crosses a boundary and that's not okay. The same happens in work if you've got your boundaries. But the key is, I guess, you have to honor them yourself first. Yes, yes, completely. (laughs) So if you have certain boundaries and you say certain things, you have to live by them yourself. Yeah. And that's, that's a big message is live what you say. Yes, yeah. Yeah, completely. So, what next for you? What's happening? What's the What's the future hold for you? Where are you taking uh, yourself as a laughter professor, laughter and happiness professor? Well, I hope to spread my wings a little more internationally. Um, so, I just recently, last week, very excitingly, did a TEDx Johannesburg talk, which was uh, an incredible privilege and just wonderful opportunity to be part of such an amazing, amazing organisation. Yeah. And um, in the new year, I'm going to be speaking at the International Laughter Conference in Atlanta and doing some workshops in New York. And for me, spreading my wings is is really my my dream and my goal is one million laughs. Right. If I should get one million people to laugh, one million people to feel good, one million people to feel happy, any which way I can get it. Yes. Um, So that's that's what I'm putting out to the universe, and that's my, my big dream. 
making a million people happy. Okay, so listeners and viewers, I hope you're hearing that. How can we help Shireen to help us? How can we get her to her figure of a million laughs around the world? I'm sure we can do something to make that happen for you. And, and we knowing that that will help us at the same time. So how can people get hold of you? Jenny, I have a Facebook page called okay. Laughter Coaching, okay. which I put beautiful, amazing, inspirational pictures and quotes and sayings every, almost every single day so that if you're having those moments where you're feeling like you just want to chuck your iPhone in the bathtub, <laughs> <laughs> you can look at it and be inspired and uplifted. I also, um, they can get me on Twitter, which is at Shah, S-H-A-R underscore laugh prof, mm -hmm. spelled L-A-U-G-H prof with the Americans or Canadians, I guess it's laugh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a web page which is www.laughtercoaching one word dot co dot za and the coaching is like you know a football coach I guess yes coaching um yes That's and hopefully in the year also would uh, would like to start an online laughter session where people can call in from anywhere and we all laugh together. Oh. I started this initiative with a coach in New York at the moment. So from South Africa to New York, we call each other and all we do is laugh. We don't oh. talk, we just laugh. Oh, we get the brain to release all these amazing chemicals that reverse the stress on our bodies, like endorphins and raise our ser uh, serotonin levels release opiates and dopamine and all those amazing chemicals. So that's something that um, if people are following me, they can look at and it's something that I, I hope to start in the new year. So we can just get thousands of people all over the world laughing all together. Oh, it does sound, it sounds brilliant. I think um, it's really interesting for me interviewing different women and all of your different energy. And, uh, you know, I've really got a lot of positivity and strength from from our conversation. And I'm, I'm sure the listeners have too. But also, thanks for sharing that it's not always easy, that you're always being tested um, and yeah. that we always still have lots to learn. Uh, but I also love your big, hairy, audacious goal, that one million <laughs>, <laughs>, laughs as well. Another little tip for everyone set yourself something that's really high uh, and, you, and you'll get there uh, it's just been really amazing to talk to you um i've really really enjoyed it um i feel quite nurtured by our conversation um and I, i'm sure people listening on a sunday evening will really take an awful lot to sort of put them into the week really ready and raring to go so thank you again Jenny, and my, my leaving tip to listeners, uh -huh. if I may, is just when you least feel it, when you least feel like it, smile, giggle, be a smile millionaire because that's the most valuable millionaire that any woman, any mother, any person could ever hope to be. So thank you. Thank you. And that's the time. No problem. Keep rocking your role in work and life. Thanks, Jenny.